Welcome back to another of the great chapters of the Bible. Our chapter today is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, the genealogy of Jesus. Beginning in verse 1. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Echeria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. And he said therefore to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then shall we do? And he answered them, Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than you are authorized to do. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusation and be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, to clear his threshing floor, and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened. And the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form, like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about thirty years of age, being the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, the son of Heli, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jenai, the son of Joseph, the son of Mattathias, the son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Ezli, the son of Nagai, the son of Maath, the son of Mattathias, the son of Semyon, the son of Josek, the son of Jodah, the son of Joannan, the son of Risa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adai, the son of Chazam, the son of Elmadam, the son of Ur, the son of Joshua, the son of Eleazar, the son of Joram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melie, the son of Mena, the son of Mattatha, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Selah, the son of Nashon, the son of Amminadab, the son of Admin, the son of Arnai, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Serub, the son of Ru, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahaliel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enos, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of 
God. Chances are, if you walk up to the average person on the street and ask them to tell you about their genealogical roots, they might be able to go back at least to their great-grandparents. Of course, there are those who can go back many generations and give some pretty detailed accounts of where they came from. But they are few and far in between. There are organizations today that can take a sample of your saliva and in a few weeks that can tell you by your DNA what parts of the world your relatives came from. Most people are quite surprised to learn they came from remote regions of the world like Eastern Europe or Central Africa. Almost no one's DNA begins and ends in one place. We're a mixture of many bloodlines, as it were. The reality of it, though, is we really don't know much about our ancestry as it pertains to specific names. When presidents are elected, researchers will often tell us who they are related to by following specific records. The lineage of kings and queens has been researched in great detail. We're often impressed when we hear that someone is related to royalty or someone of fame in the past. But we don't often give much attention to that potato farmer seven generations ago in Ireland or the criminal sentenced to death way back in our past. Chapter 3 of the book of Luke is one of the greatest testaments to the history in the world. Each of the first four books of the New Testament are called the Gospel of Matthew or the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of Luke or the Gospel of John by those who translated the Bible, although the writers themselves did not refer to their works that way. In fact, only Matthew and Mark actually used the word gospel in their writing. The Greek word gospel means good message. All four of the gospels can be considered a work of history, being that they record the events surrounding the life and death of Jesus Christ. Yet only Luke approaches and identifies his work as an effort to put in order what many people had been hearing about this man Jesus. He begins his record of Luke chapter 1, verse 1 through 4 by saying, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word have delivered them to us. It seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things that you have been taught. Along the way, Luke, the beloved physician as Paul calls him in Colossians 4.14, drops breadcrumbs for us to follow. I call them breadcrumbs as a way of following a trail. If you remember Hansel and Gretel, dropped them in order to find their way back. We tend to think that those breadcrumb trail has long since been eaten up by time. But Luke, inspired by the Holy Spirit to record these things, has indeed left us a trail to follow by identifying key events and people for us to look into. In chapter 1 and verse 5, he tells us about Herod, the king of Judah, about the division of priests of Elijah. In chapter 2 and verse 1 and following, he tells us about the decree that goes out from Caesar Augustus and the registration from Quirinius, governor of Syria about Joseph and his pregnant wife from the tribe of David who goes to Bethlehem to register. In chapter 3, Luke identifies Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, Herod the Tetrarch and Philip, and Lysanias, Annas and Caiaphas and John. We casually skim past these figures in history and go on our way to reading. But they are there for a reason. Skeptics have said that there was no decree that went out and who was this Quirinius, doubting the claims of this writer, Luke? But those who were willing to follow that cold trail back into history indeed found those records and proved what Luke said was indeed true. And if those are not enough, Luke then proceeds to bring us the genealogy of Jesus that goes back not just to his great-grandfather, not just to the relatives back in the Middle East, but all the way back to the beginning, the beginning to Adam, the Son of God. Luke, why would you do that? And who cares? Now be truthful. When you're reading along in Luke 3, beginning with verse 23, do you pour over each and every name? 
isn't it more likely that many of us will just sort of skim past those names and maybe slow down and get to Obed and Jesse and David and then scurry on to the end? We might not care, so to speak, about each of these individuals here, but I can assure you that they are of the utmost importance. Skeptics have scoffed at the seeming discrepancies between Matthew's genealogy and Luke's, but it is their lack of understanding and ignorance as to why each is important. Matthew's account must establish Jesus' claim to the throne of David. That's why the line goes through Solomon in Matthew chapter 1 and verse 6. Luke is concerned not only with Jesus' bloodline through David, which he does through Nathan, but also of importance to the Greeks, that it would go all the way back to Adam and then God. Read the Greek and Roman mythology and see what they thought of the sons of the gods, Jupiter and Zeus. Still, more than this is the storyline in each person that tells us of the love of God had for man. It is pronounced in the genealogy as it is in John 3.16 when we read, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. Each of these is a link in the chain of love that connects us back to eternity. And should we be faithful in obedience, we shall in the future eternity come to share with them as Jesus said in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 11. I tell you, Many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Have you reserved your place at that table? And Lord willing, let's meet here again tomorrow. Let's look at another of the great chapters of the Bible.